Hello and welcome to Computer Tech and More. Today we're going to be taking a look at the P12 Redux from Noctua. This is part of my redone series where I redid all of my noise testing analysis on every single fan that I've tested thus far. So first we're going to do a little bit of an explanation and then we're going to get into the graphs and the data. Um, so let's get into it. With CPU air cooler testing, noise normalized, the P12 Redux originally ranked 28th, it is now ranked 43rd. In cooler testing, 100% PW fan signaling, it was ranked 32nd. It retains that position. In cooler value proposition, noise normalized, it was ranked 17th. It is now ranked 23rd. Value proposition, 100% PW PWM fan signaling, cooler test, it retains its position at 15th. Uh, CFM testing, noise normalized, it was ranked 29th. It is now ranked 41st, so a loss in position there. Um, CFM test, 100% PWM fan signaling, it retains its position at 31. CFM value proposition, it was ranked 16th, it is now ranked 18th. CFM value proposition, 100% PWM fan signaling, it retains its position at 15th. Um, case simulation test, 6 inch mark, noise normalized, it was ranked 40th, it is now ranked 43rd, so not a big change in position there. At the 11 inch marks, case simulation test, noise normalized, it was ranked 45th, it is now ranked 43rd, so a ever so slight improvement at no air movement approximately. <clears throat> Six inch mark, value proposition, noise normalized. It was ranked 26th, it is now ranked 23rd. The 11 inch mark, value proposition, was ranked 45th, it is now ranked 43rd. Now we're on to the specific graphs and the data. First up is the case simulation test. This can be looked at in a couple of key different ways, but first, the most important for you is what size case do you actually plan on buying? So if you're looking at smaller cases, so a small form factor, I ITX motherboards that are still a front-to-back airflow design with an air cooler, you'd be looking at the 6-inch mark. The 6-inch mark is also representative of a short throw distance, meaning if you want to use your fans at the bottom of your computer case to blow air up into your GPU, that 6-inch mark would also be representative of that. The 9-inch mark is representative of your compact towers. So think a standard ATX motherboard with a GPU that is about the length of that motherboard, that would be the 9-inch mark. Then you've got the 11-inch mark. The 11-inch mark is representative of your standard mid-tower cases. And then you've got the 14.5-inch mark. The 14.5-inch mark is representative of your large tower. Something like the Fractal Design uh, Torrent would actually sit into that size category. Now, these lengths are not the length of the case. <clears throat> these lengths are actually the distance from the front of your case, approximately where the fans are located, to where the CPU socket is. Because this type of testing is most specifically applicable to air coolers. So, how do we how do we determine this? <clears throat> well, I've got a very simplified test. This is the the I'm losing my words here. I have the control fan. The control fan is based off of three parts: a a twelve x twenty five to one part a fourteen. Hundred and forty millimeter millimeter fans like the a fourteen tend to do better at the eleven and fourteen point five inch mark while smaller 120s tend to do better at the 6 and 9. By combining these two fans, I hope to create a quote-unquote perfect composite fan. It's really not quote perfect, but it's a good indicator of fans that are higher than I consider to be uh, good to excellent. Fans that are just underneath it to way below it are good to very poor. So the uh, P12 Redux is an older Noctua design that they brought back from the dead, basically, to be a cheaper alternative to their more expensive fans. And it is a pressure-oriented fan, so it is no surprise that it does it very poorly in this test. So we're just going to move on. And once again, we see it highlighted right here, dropping off very steeply, indicating that it does a very poor, poor job at concentrating in airflow, so I would not recommend it as a case fan. End of story. 100% um, PWM fan signaling. Again, similar story. It actually starts off okay, and we do see that, but it does drop off very steeply compared to other fans in its mm, general area on the graphs. In terms of noise testing, um, well, we see it gains very little for a lot more noise, and then I think I hit a harmonic in here because it got, as soon as I jumped past that pedo and fan signaling, so this would be... Um, 20, 30, 40, then jumped to 50% PW fencingly. It dropped in noise before climbing again. And then it gained a lot of efficiency before leveling out again. So there are definite 
optimizations in this fan uh, that I was just seeing were like, um, it was at 50, 60, 70, so like 80% PWM fan signaling is a particular, particularly efficient PWM fan signal for this fan. Now we're on to the K or the CPU cooler test. So my cooler is the Noctua U12A, and it was done in a single fan configuration for all testing. On these graphs, better fans sit in the top left, worse fans sit in the bottom right, and we're going to go from there. So the graph on the left side here is RPM versus airspeed. This is basically just a blade efficiency graph. It is how good is this blade design at shoving air through a heatsink. And we can see that it's outperforming my control fan ever so slightly, indicating that the blade design is actually very efficient or very effective at pushing air. Now, once we go over to the other graph where it's noise versus airspeed, we see that it's not particularly efficient noise-wise at doing its job. Now, it does gain a lot of efficiency right at, what, what did I say that was, the 70%? Yeah, 80% mark. It gains a lot of efficiency and actually matches my control fan. But at every other point, it is just vastly outperformed noise-wise compared to the control fan. <clears throat> the P12 Redux, um, in terms of ranking noise normalized, is towards the bottom of the graph. Side. So let's say you have the P12 Redux. It's moving 0.7 meters per second of air at my noise noise value of 12 decibels. Well, if you upgrade to the Tough Fan 12, you're now going to be pushing 1.2 meters per second of air. So that means for the same noise level, you're going to be able to draw a higher wattage on a um, unlocked CPU. Or if your CPU is locked, you're going to be running at a, at a lower temperature or clock speed limited. Or you can take this extra overhead, back off the PWM fan signal a little bit, and now your system will run a little bit quieter. It's your choice how you use the data, but it tells you a relative ranking for these fans. And as a general side note, I do have P12 Redux on my Synology NAS, uh, pulling air through it as an exhaust. Just saying that I am using them. Uh, at 100% PWM fan signal, we see where it ranks. It's actually moving a solid amount of air. It's just like 5, 6 decibels noisier than the A12X25 for less airflow. So it is a better pressure optimized fan and might actually do better on a radiator. Uh, anyways, that's where it ranks. <clears throat> then we have its noise versus airspeed through the cooler. Well, we see a lot of similar trends like we did in the air cooler where it gets particularly noisy, hit our harmonic, comes back, climbs again, becomes very efficient, and then it kind of plateaus. <clears throat> so what does this mean for this fan? Well, it's okay but it's not great it, it could be better um i don't know if it's the bearing noise or if it's the blade design noise uh i'm not uh that fine-tuned yet so that'd be something to for me to research further as i continue to grow and improve and get a, become a larger channel but right now we're just seeing it as this next up is my cfm test this is probably my least favorite test and kind of case in point, we see that the P12 Redux and the control fan are near, they're even more closely lined up in this test than they were in the air cooler, which kind of proves my point that it's hiding all the results. Now, once we're taking a look at noise versus CFM, at least they separate out more because noise is kind of the dividing factor in most of these fans. So we just see it as being a lot less efficient, and it actually never reaches up and matches my control fan again. And what does it rank? Well, it is well towards the bottom. Let's just move on. At 100% PWM fan signaling, it is still well towards the bottom. So how does the graph look? Well, it's towards the bottom. So bottom, 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 bottom. So that brings us to the value proposition. The P12 Redux is a $15 fan. All my fans are based off of retail pricing that I could find off of Amazon. So do check your own areas, and I do recommend that you probably redo the math for whatever currency is in your hometown to determine which fan is actually the better value if you care about that. So the value proposition is actually most important for if you're on a very tight budget. So you're trying to squeeze every penny out of your bill to get the best bang for the buck. 
this is who the value proposition really is for. So we see that the p-toll of redox is slightly better than average. Actually, no, I'm going to take that back. It is right in line with average, maybe a little below, in the case simulation test at the 6-inch mark. At 100%, it is below average. Matter of fact, it's really funny that how closely it lines up with the A12X25. At the 11-inch mark, it is basically a did-not-finish. So I wouldn't recommend it for bigger cases. Uh, CFM test. Well, here it does kind of okay. It's slightly over average, but overall it's still not that great. Kind of funny how it's... But it is a better value compared to the F12. At 100% PW and fan signaling, it's a little bit better than average, but again, it's a far cry from like the top picks in the category. And through the CPU air cooler, well, here it does a little bit better. So you can see how it ranks compared to other Nocto fans. But just overall, it's still just a little bit behind. At 100%, it's actually doing quite a bit better overall. But it's still just a far cry from the absolute best value. And one note about the value proposition. This isn't performance. This is performance per dollar. So if you do need a certain level of performance, like for your CPU or cooler, I do recommend that you actually focus on that first before going to the absolute value proposition. Make sure you're getting a fan with enough performance for your particular need. So then what does this leave me with the P12? Redux. <clears throat> well, uh, I bought mine specifically for cooling off my, uh, to pull the air through my Synology Ness, and they are quieter than the original fans in there. But obviously there are limitations with this fan. Um, so I think in the right set of applications, they are a great choice, but they may not be the best choice for every type of application out there. So I'll have to let you decide which, uh, how best to use them for your own set of particular circumstances. And at the end of every video, I do like to show off my raw data. This data does belong to me. It, I am the owner of it. However, if you want to use it for your own set of particular for your own particular uses, you may go ahead and do so. And by own particular uses, I do mean creating your own Excel chart, and that's it. So that you can create the data, make your own graphs, yada, 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 whatever you like. If you want to use my data in any sort of video publication, written or journal, I do ask that you reference me and my channel because I spend many hours uh, gathering and collecting the data. Each fan individually takes me around one and a half to two hours for this level of detail. Um, then it takes more time for the graphs and the charts and making a video presentation and editing it down and all that kind of fun stuff. Anyways, I love data. I'm an aerospace engineer by trade and I specialized in fluid, fluid mechanics, fluid dynamics while in college with an aerospace degree. So this is a fundamental interest of mine. Uh, if you're just wondering about my background and, um, well, if you've got uh, constructive criticism for me on how I can improve my videos, I do take that. Uh, just note that it may take a little bit of time for me to implement it into future videos. And uh, if you've got suggestions for other fans for me to take a look at, please leave them in the comment sections down below. Uh, other than that, I hope you have a great day. Thank you for joining me on Computer Tech and More. Please subscribe and check out my Patreon page, all linked down below. And I'll see you next time.